My sermon passage is Luke chapter 6, verses 17 to 26. And Jesus came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon, who came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all the crowd sought to touch him, for power came forth from him and healed them all. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed are you poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you that hunger now, for you shall be satisfied. Blessed are you that weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when men hate you, and when they exclude you and revile you, and cast out your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day, and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven, for so their fathers did to the prophets. But woe to you that are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you that are full now, for you shall hunger. Woe to you that laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe to you when, men, oh, when all men speak well of you, for so their fathers did to the false prophets. The word of the Lord. Be to God. May God grant us wisdom and courage for interpretation. Were you squirming a little by the end of that? <coughs> Probably none of us considers any of us rich, but don't be so sure. If you woke up inside a decent building and could get something to eat this morning without begging for it, you're rich compared to the homeless and the hungry in this country and compared to about 1.6 billion people on the planet who do not have a decent uh, place to live. And I could be wrong, but I'll bet every one of us is full, or could be. And I'll bet every one of us laughs. And I'll bet that men and women speak well of each of us on a personal level. So are these woes from Jesus for us? Woe to you that are rich. Woe to you that are full now. Woe to you that laugh now. Woe to you when all men speak well of you. Are those woes unto us? Who's Jesus talking about? And who's Jesus talking to? And here's another important question. To whom is Luke writing? And what difference does that make? Well, that could change everything. So let's see. Luke 1, chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. Lays it out. It says, Inasmuch as many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the things which have been accomplished among us, just as they were delivered to us by those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, it seemed good to me also, having followed all things closely for some time past, to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, that you may know the truth concerning the things of which you have been informed, or which you have been instructed, is what it says in the New Revised Standard Version. Now, nobody knows exactly who Theophilus was. But one thing, some things are clear. He wasn't poor. He was most excellent Theophilus. And that's like saying your excellency, or your highness, or your honor. He was probably a ranking Roman official. In any case, he could read. Or he could afford someone to read to him. And he lived in a place where he could receive a letter not poor, and implied in verse 4, he was a convert to Christ, because this was written to instruct him on what that meant. All of Luke was written to Theophilus to instruct him, a new convert. So Luke is writing to Theophilus, and we believe to us, right? And Jesus is talking about the greedy and the unfortunate poor. The greedy and the unfortunate poor, the most socially ostracized anywhere, because poverty costs almost every other benefit of society, doesn't it? 
So if you're poor, you're on all the margins. And Jesus is talking to his disciples, not only the twelve, but all who had come for teaching and healing. That's what it says, and that includes us, because we come to him for teaching and healing, and we come together for that. But that's the real difference between the rich and the poor and Luke's Beatitudes. Luke's version, which we call the Sermon on the Plain. The poor have lost what little they had, whether it was wealth or family or station. Whatever it was, they lost it. They were poor. And the rich, whether they had large amounts of wealth or not, were the greedy. And they usually kept company with other greedy people, right? Something to keep in mind. So dear Theophilus may have squirmed too to hear Jesus say, Woe to you that are rich. Woe to you that are full. Woe to you that laugh now. Woe to you when all men speak well of you. If he was greedy, I mean, he's holding this papyrus or whatever, this letter. Oh, this is what I've gotten into. Woe to the rich. Make it. Woe to you, Theophilus, new disciple of Christ. Here's what you're in for. There's no prosperity gospel. Those guys have it backwards. The gospel is good news to and for the poor. Blessed are the poor. Blessed are the poor. So let's all squirm some more. See, Theophilus is being instructed by Luke. Are we listening? Earlier to set this up, Luke made sure that he and we heard something else radical from Jesus. In Luke 4, verses 18 to 19, remember, Judas stood up, Jesus stood up in his hometown synagogue, opened the Bible to the book of Isaiah, and he read, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to do what? To preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Remember that? Three weeks ago, I declared to you that as Christians, as little Christs, the Spirit of the Lord is upon us because he has anointed us to get the good news out to the poor. He has sent us to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. That's what Luke is telling Theophilus, an educated or at least literate Christian, an elite. Fellow elite Christians, Listen, David Ewart, a minister in the United Church of Canada, says we need to hear Luke's Sermon on the Plain through those ears, the ears of a high-standing elite person seeking to know the truth of Jesus' way. And that shouldn't be difficult for any of us. The question is whether he was greedy, and the question is whether we are greedy. Theophilus was a high-standing elite in first century Rome, where fully 80% of all people were poor. And those at the very deep bottom were literally expendable. And even most of those above that 80% were hanging on to their situation for dear life, lest they fall or lest they be taken down. Everyone except the emperor and his court were hanging on to dear life for what they had. The vast majority, the poor, were just trying to get by. Just my daily bread, please, just my daily bread. Because for someone poor to actually find good fortune was dangerous. Only the greedy rich could get richer and get away with it. Only the greedy rich could find good fortune and get away with it. Not because they deserved it, but because they always get away with it. Laughing all the way to the bank and laughing all the way to their full bellies. The idea was that everything was in limited supply. Everything. Food, water, Love, honor, even shame. The greedy rich were always taking more from the poor. Now that's hard for us to wrap our brains around because we can make anything we need in this country, right? We, 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 can, we can grow stuff, we can make stuff. We don't even think in terms of anything being limited to us, but in that world at that time, it was a closed loop. There was only so much of anything. And so if you got more, somebody got less. And if a poor person got more, or even got something back, that meant that some other poor person had something taken from them. And the one who seemed to get ahead automatically fell under suspicion. That's why it was dangerous to be fortunate. And that helps illustrate two parables Jesus tells later in Luke. 
Remember the lost sheep? He went to find the one, leaving behind the 99. Well, when he found that one, he called together his friends and his neighbors to celebrate, right? And probably to explain himself, lest he be seen because of a supposed theft, to be greedy, lest he be seen as one of the rich. And Jesus tells the parable of the lost coin. Same kind of a deal, right? The woman lost uh, one of her ten coins, and she swept the house and searched and searched until she found it. And when she finally found it, she called together her friends and her neighbors to celebrate. And probably to explain herself, because if she had come up with a coin that wasn't hers, then she would be one of them. She'd be seen as one of the rich, one of the greedy, because someone had to lose something for her to get that coin. Ewart, the Canadian minister, goes on. What does it mean for such a person, a not poor person, to join the Jesus community? What does it mean for such a person to fulfill the words of Isaiah 61, which Jesus read from the scroll? Well, then it meant losing high status and position and power. And it meant giving up greed. It meant giving up self-preservation first, even, as a way of life. It meant radical change for somebody like Theophilus to come into the Jesus community. And it meant really just about what it does for us here now for dinner, right? As literate, middle-class people in the richest country on the planet, if we're stingy, whether out of fear, pride, or self, plain selfishness, we've got to give that up. Theophilus and we are called by Christ to offer healing and comfort and hope for the poor and others that systems and societies have cast aside. That's what Isaiah says. That's what Jesus said when Jesus read Isaiah. If we rich, or at least we not poor, are close to God, it's not that hard to do that because the poor have nothing but God. And then the blessings and the woes may start to blur. When we walk their walk and we talk the gospel talk, going to the poor, and acting on these instructions from the Lord, when we act on these as instructions, blessed are you poor, for yours is the kingdom of God, we say welcome into our midst. Or better, we're coming into your midst. Blessed are you that hunger now, for you shall be satisfied. Here, sisters and brothers, have something to eat of ours. Because we have enough. So here, have some. Blessed are you that hunger now. Blessed are you that weep now, for you shall laugh how can, we make things, how can we make things better for you right now? Can we hold you while you empty yourself of tears and help you dry them? Blessed are you when men hate you and when they exclude you and they revile you and cast out your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. We will walk with you, sit with you, weep with you, and stand with you in the name of Jesus and justice. You ostracized, marginalized, poor person. We'll do that. And right there, though, right there, walking with the poor, standing with the margin marginalized, marching, if need be, with the oppressed, the woes of the rich, the woes of the rich come together in Christ with his blessings and with our work for the poor. It comes together, and the greedy world and the corrupt church are appalled because Jesus warns men hate you and exclude you and revile you and cast out your name as evil on account of the Son of Man, on account of me. That's what you've got to look forward to, Theophilus. That's what you've got to look forward to, Christian. Luke says, what will it be, Theophilus? Jesus said, which is it, disciple? Is it this? To be greedy, well-connected, fat and happy, well thought of, popular and shameless? Woe to you. Or is it this? To be serving, generous, selfless, and considered a suspect or a person of interest by corrupt authorities and power, but having honor, blessed are you. God wants us all, rich and poor, middle class, and God wants it all, all we have and all that we are. But God is closest to, to those, poor or not, who know they really have nothing but God. God is closest to those who really have nothing but God. And the world hates that because the world can't get in there. So is it this? Blessed are you when men hate you and when they exclude you and revile you and cast out your name as evil 
on the account of the Son of Man. Is that it? It is. Amen. In peace, pray for peace, wage peace, do not be afraid, don't be rich, go to the poor, be a suspect, be a person of interest to the evil authorities, and love one another, every single other. Amen.